This is the Tyler Morgan Show on Relentless Daring Media Network. Welcome back to Land of Bourbon and Bad Decisions. This is the Tyler Morgan Show live on twitch.tv slash Tyler Morgan Show. Or maybe you're watching this on YouTube at youtube.com slash at the Tyler Morgan Show. I don't know why I had to add the there, but apparently somebody beat me to my own name. Urgh. But it is what it is. Or you check me out on Rumble. Search Relentless Daring over on Rumble and you will be able to find the show. Um... If you're watching this live on Twitch, I apologize. I was about 15 minutes late getting started. Um, my computer decided to do something really, really dumb and um, had the Wi-Fi not working, so I couldn't get online, do anything. Thanks, computer. But before I get into all the news that is fit to talk about, let me tell you about the one, the only Blue Collar Beardsman Beard Oil. Yes, yes. If you're watching this on the video, whether it be live or you're watching, like I said, the YouTubes or the Rumbles, you notice I have a nice, thick, luxurious beard, and I keep it looking amazing and well-conditioned using beard oil from Blue Collar Beardsman. Now, I know someone could say, oh, that's not paid advertisement. No, it's not, a li- it's not paid advertisement. I love their product, and I'm happy to talk about it. And, you know, check them out. They have such great, great products. They have just a plain old-fashioned beard oil that, you know, it's unscented for those people like to be the average Joe. That's the name of it, average Joe. Uh, Maybe you're into, like, the lemon-lime drink. So they actually have one uh, called The Apprentice that is lemon-lime flavored. They have flavored, scented, whatever. Please don't drink the beard oil. It is not healthy and is not fit for human consumption, but rub it on your face. But also be sure to sign up for their subscription service. Every month you get a new custom flavor, custom scent for that month. Uh, Coming up for July, they have HVAC Technician. It is like orange dreamsicle and... This is probably going to be my favorite so far. I mean, my standard my standard is I usually use the smoke break, which has since uh, hints of tobacco, spicy tobacco notes, and it's just it smells like a good cigar. That's my go to during with the, one of the uh, standard flavors. Flavors keep saying flavors. Why? Um, anyways, it's my favorite scent. Just uses my standard go to, but. The, the Apprentice has been really, or The Apprentice, Sparky has been really good. That was like the Lemon Lime with Sour Patch Kids. The Provider, which is a very woodsy kind of log cabin, almost like a sandalwood scent to it. All of these are great scents. Check them out, bluecollarbeardsman.com. What can I say? They're just amazing. Now, getting on to the insanity. Um, One of the big stories of the last couple weeks has been... The Sisters of Perpetual Something or Other in uh, California that were going to do a Pride event. They are going to be honored for their work by the Los Angeles Dodgers. And it was a big to-do. Uh, there was lots of people who were protesting and, ah, oh, you shouldn't do this. This is an insult to Catholicism. Not disagreeing with them is horribly, horribly blasphemous. No, pardon me. But... The Dodgers are like, well, okay, we're just going to we're going to cancel on that. We're not going to do it. And then um, the Rainbow Community got all incensed, and they threw a fit. And suddenly, oh, the, we here at the Los Angeles Dodgers, we're happy to have them. We love them, and we invite you all to come out and check it out. And these are people who dress as nuns. These are men who dress as nuns, and they do sexually provocative acts, including having a person being fake crucified that they use as a pole to pole dance on. Huh. But we can't figure out why they're mad. Well, the day came, the day went, and if you saw the video of 
them being honored. You would be shocked as the cameras panned over Dodger Stadium and it has like 500 people. Now, sure, that could be as a, you know, people protesting not wanting to go to the game. But I think here's where the big one was. The people who did show up, they weren't in the game. They were the ones outside. The ones who were outside were having a massive demonstration because of this baloney. Social media galvanized by massive crowd protesting Dodgers honoring drag, honoring drag nuns. World is over. Woke agenda. Uh, the LGBTQ activist group, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, was honored with a Community Hero Award at the L.A. Dodgers annual Pride Night on Friday. Video showing vast numbers of Protestants and Catholics protesting an L.A. Dodgers baseball game that included the, a presentation honoring the an activist LGBTQQIA2 plus ad infinitum group drew massive support from many on social media Friday. Conservative lawmakers, commentators, and influencers praised the demonstrators on Twitter for taking a stand against the perceived anti-Christian display that was taking place at the nearby Dodger Stadium. Perceived anti-Christian. How did... This is from Fox News. Um, me. See, does it have the author listed on here? No, it doesn't. What a surprise. If you haven't followed uh, What's Broke on Fox News through Matt Walsh on Twitter, it is an absolute crap show. But it, it's not perceived anti-Christian. It is 100% anti-Christian. The big thing about Christianity is not indulgence. It is not, you know, putting yourself and your needs and your wants above everything else. If you have a group called the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, that is exactly the opposite of, Christ, of Christianity. When Paul said, die to yourself, when Paul said, I die to myself daily, that is the opposite of perpetual indulgence. But I don't work for Fox News. I'm not a writer for Fox News, so I don't know what in the hell I'm talking about. But I digress. Prominent users claim that demonstration was one of the best things I have ever seen this year and proof that the world is over the woke agenda. The demonstrations occurred Friday night in a parking lot outside the sports venue during the L.A. Dodgers annual Pride Night. In addition to the Dodgers game against the San Francisco Giants, the evening's festivities included ceremony honoring a group of drag queens and activists called the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. The group has described themselves as a leading-edge order of queer and trans nuns, a queer spin on Catholic nuns and religious orders. News of the L.A. Dodgers will be honoring the LGBTQQIA2 plus ad infinitum group with a Community Hero Award sparked outrage prior to the event, with several Christian groups insisting that honoring the group accused of blatantly mocking Christ and Christians, particularly Catholics, was inappropriate. Gee, I wonder why they think that. Hmm. Even an outraged Senator Marco Rubio sent a letter to MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred expressing his disapproval for the event. The backlash initially prompted the Dodgers to rescind their invitation for the drag group to attend and be honored at the Pride celebration through, though pushback to that move, including the LA Pride, including LA Pride threatening to pull out of Pride Night. There's a euphemism in there somewhere to quote Brad Staggs. made the Dodgers reverse their decision yet again. They weeble and they wobble and they always bow down. 
The backlash initially prompted... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I just read that one. The team released a statement explaining the abrupt change. Uh, after much thought and feedback from our diverse communities, honest conversations within the Los Angeles Dodgers organization, and generous discussions with the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, the Los Angeles Dodgers would like to offer our sincerest apologies to the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, members of the LGBTQ plus community, and their friends and families. Meanwhile, a large protest put on by religious organizations, by religious organization, Catholics for Catholics, Catholics for Catholics, huh. open to anyone willing to join, happened outside the stadium. Videos of the thousands of Christian protesters marching and praying outside the baseball stadium gained support online, with many prominent conservatives expressing their pride in seeing so many Christians standing up against the team's far less far left festivities. They have tweets from Marjorie Taylor Greene. Conservative lawmaker MTG praised the protesters tweeting, seeing thousands of Christians and Catholics praise the holy name of God as they protest outside Dodgers' disgusting embrace and praise of transgender nuns was one of the best things I've seen happen this year. We've had enough. Conservative commentator Graham Allen tweeted, the world is over the woke agenda. Massive Christian groups have arrived outside Dodger Stadium to protest the anti-Christian group that the Dodgers are honoring. We are with you. Today, New News Africa Chief White House Correspondent Simon Ataba, which if you ever watch him going round and round with uh, Corrine Jean-Pierre, it's always great because she doesn't like him at all because he actually holds her feet to the fire. Share a video saying, breaking, see it. Thousands of Catholics marched towards Dodger Stadium, Los Angeles, chanting, save our children, and they are making a visible stand for Christ. Fox News contributor Leo Terrell shared video and remarked, you made a big mistake, hashtag Dodgers. Conservative filmmaker and U.S. congressional candidate Robbie Starbuck commented, incredible turnout to stand up against the at Dodgers, celebrating sacrilegious mockery of Jesus. We are fighting a spiritual battle. And yeah, they just... And just completely own themselves by going ahead and going, you know, here in Los Angeles, um, the city of angels founded around a Catholic mission with a large number of Catholic Mexicans and Catholic Mexican descent people who live in this city. I've got a brilliant idea. Let's just piss on all of them and tell them it's raining. It didn't work out so hot. And it's awesome to see that they completely owned themselves in this. Obviously, people didn't want to be there because, like I said, if you saw the video, the stadium was empty, like 500 people. Maybe the people who were there, they they're either a super diehard baseball fans who are completely ignoring the garbage or B they were on the side of the group that was being honored. And so we're going to do our part. We're going to stick up for them. Yay. But it's ridiculous. And we're seeing it more and more as people are, willing to take a stand, willing to push back. I mean, during hockey season, you had one uh, Pittsburgh player who was Orthodox Russian Christian. And when they said, you're going to wear the rainbow numbers on your jersey, he said, "Mm, mm, no. You can believe what you want. You can practice what you want. But as for me, I will not participate. And that was a brilliant, brilliant strategy because the team ended up dropping their pride night, which when you're having pride night like eight times a year, um, what happened to pride month? Do you really need pride month if 
sports teams that don't play during June, the NFL, I mean, the NBA did have their uh, playoffs. They had their championship in June. So, I mean, but it's not league-wide. Do we need to have the Pride Night going on year-round? No. Frankly, we don't need the Pride Night during June because we get the Pride stuff shoved in our faces all the time. It just... It, it, it just gets tiresome. If if you are straight, you get lectured. Oh, you, you got to support the, the queer community. Which, when did queer suddenly not be a slur against homosexuals? Suddenly, if, if you say you're queer... It can be this entire spectrum of sexual depravity and debauchery. So where where does this come into play? Where when did this change to where it it went from okay, what happens in your bedroom happens in your bedroom? As long as you're not involving me, I'm fine with it. As long as you're not hurting anyone, as long as you know, all acts are taking place between consenting adults, do what you want. I'm 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 don't want to be part of it. And suddenly, over probably the last ten years, especially with the rise of social media, it's everywhere all June long and starting to be all year long where it's just constantly you have uh, companies that they take, they change their social media handles to the rainbow. They're putting up these pride pictures. I mean, you, you have Sesame street freaking Sesame street, a show that was known for, okay, maybe pushing some stuff like, um, you know, interracial relationships and, and even not even just, you know, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend stuff, just, oh, pardon me, just treating people decently, even though he's white, she's black, they live in the neighborhood, and they get along. That's fine. That's great. But they put out a tweet celebrating pride even though they're an educational show for preschoolers. Do preschoolers really need to learn about gay this, gay that? I mean, they live their lives with it. I'm sure not all preschoolers have it just a mom and just a dad or just a mom or just a dad at home. They they have a mom and dad. Most of and I guarantee there's ones that have two dads, there's ones that have two moms. They have an idea of something is going on that is different than the majority of society. Do we really need kid shows pushing this agenda? Do we need Major League Baseball, Major League Soccer, the National Basketball Association, the National Football League? Do we need all of these groups just pushing this down our throats? My my wife has gone back. She started watching uh, How to Get Away with Murder. This is a Shonda Rhimes show. If you know anything about Shonda Rhimes shows, Grey's Anatomy, Station 19, Bridgerton. Yes, she's responsible for Bridgerton. I don't know what to tell you. You watch these shows, and there's so much social crap being pushed, and my wife's watching the show, and all of a sudden, you see this guy. Who, it, it's obvious he's gay. And then it's all of a sudden, it's not just he's gay. He's with his gay boyfriend, and they're in the apartment together. No, it's just in your face they're making out. And it's just like, come on. The general population does not care. They do not want to see it. And I get it. Well, you got to have representation. 
do you? Do you? Really? I don't give a rat anus if me, a tall, fat, kind of, kind of ungainly, disabled veteran. I don't care if I'm not represented on a television show. Because a lot of people look at me, well, you're tall, white, and fat. I mean, we have tall, white, and fat people all over the television. Cool. But you know what? I don't need someone on TV to represent me to make me feel like part of an included crowd. Which that's all it is. It, it's all about this collective identity bullcrap. And why so many people think that collective identity, which collectivism is always leftist. Keep that in mind. Collectivism is always leftist. Collectivism is never good because then that's when you start getting, you know, Joe Biden coming out on uh, Charlemagne the God show and saying, if you don't know if you're voting for me, you ain't black. Wait. Black people are only allowed to vote for Joe Biden? You mean there's not individuals who can look at a party platform, look at a candidate's platform, and go, you know, um, I don't like what he stands for. I don't like what his party stands for. So I'm going to vote for that guy over there. He comes out, then he comes out and says, well, uh, as opposed to the Hispanic community, you know, the black community is not this monolithic community. I'm like, what? So Hispanics are? Cuban immigrants, Venezuelan immigrants, Argentina immigrants, Colombian immigrants, Panamanians, Hondurans, you know, immigrants from all these places. They're exactly the same as second, third generation Hispanic Americans whose families came from those places or came from Mexico or maybe, you know, illegally immigrated and then, you know, they were born here so they're citizens. They think the same, every last one of them thinks the exact same way. They are monolithic. Collectivism is a lie. And the whole LGBTQQIA2 plus ad infinitum collectivist movement perpetuates that lie. I have spoken with many a homosexual person who looks at this stuff and they go, dude, no, this is not who we are. I have a friend on Twitter who is gay, has lived with his partner for years and years and years. And he sees all this stuff going on and he gets himself called a homophobe because he calls it out. He thinks this crap is stupid. He doesn't want to be part of this collectivist movement. The idea that all gay people, all lesbians, all bisexuals, all intersex people, all trans people want to be this giant, look Look at the jazz hands, glitter, fabulous everywhere, and we're going to be in your face about what genitals we prefer and where we want to put our genitals? No. They're not like that. The majority of straight people, like, <clears throat> pardon me, the majority of straight people, they don't go around and, yeah, I really like my genitals to go into that other type of genital, and by God, I'm going to tell the world about it. The people who do that are generally considered relatively lowbrow, and no one wants to hear their tales of um, their tales. We don't want to hear their tales. So why should we be subjected to an entire group's, you know, celebration of 
what they have and where they want to put it or what they want to have near theirs. It's absolute insanity and more proof that we are in dire need of a sweet meteor of death. Men, are you rocking a beer that is dry, itchy, and just plain gross? Ladies, would you like your man's beer to be soft and supple? Go to bluecollarbeardsman.com and check out their line of handcrafted beard oils and support a company that knows all about hard work. Check them out on Facebook at Blue Collar Beardsman or on Twitter at BC underscore Beardsman and get beer products made for the working man by the working man. Bluecollarbeardsman.com. Drizzly is the leading home alcohol delivery service available. Imagine being able to sit at home and pull up your smartphone and browse your favorite wine, beer, spirits, and then have it delivered to your home in as little as one hour. Go to drizzly.com or check out the link in the show notes and start shopping today. Not available in all areas. Please drink responsibly. Drizzly.com. All right, so getting back into the swing of things, I got to tell you about coffee. Yes, coffee is, you see all the whiskey behind me if you're watching this on video. And I love my whiskey. It's also very good. But coffee is really that beverage that it gets me up in the morning because if you're drinking whiskey first thing in the morning, you might want to go find a meeting somewhere. So I drink coffee in the mornings, and my favorite coffee is from American Pride Roasters. American Pride Roasters is a small company out of Iowa. They are custom roasted, custom ground to order, and blended in just such amazing flavors. Me, I am a fan of just plain old-fashioned black coffee that tastes like coffee. Yep. So the, the Calvin Coolidge blend, the Teddy Roosevelt blend, uh, right now, I'm working my way through uh, George Washington crossing the Delaware, which that one is out of stock, but he hopes to have something put together that is very close to what he had originally. So Dave will keep you posted on that. Follow him on Twitter at APR Coffee, oddly enough. But anyways, they also have great flavored coffees. Do you like that kind of a hint of bacon with your coffee. Well, might I suggest Doc's Bacon Blast. Maybe you're kind of a dessert coffee guy. You know, you so like blueberry donut. I might recommend the Hamilton Burr Blend. There's so many great things. Or maybe you want a, a little candy that's going to give you a pick-me-up. Check out their coffee drops. There is so much to choose from. Check them out. APRcoffee.com. Historically great coffee. All right, so kind of going back to this whole LGB blah, 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 blah stuff. Yesterday, the state of Florida executed a man who was convicted of two murders. One of those murders was a 14-year-old girl. And a content warning, three Two, one, you have been warned. He killed and then raped the body of a 14-year-old girl. Spent 30 years on death row, which that in and of itself is an absolute travesty. However, the ACLU, they, they love to complain and piss and moan whenever any Convicted killer is executed because, oh my God, you just can't kill people back. It's awful. Yeah, sit down, Cletus. Um, only this time they did it more so because 
The killer, who I shall not name because I don't want him to have any more recognition for who and what he is and how awful of a human being, deserving of death that he is, I don't want him to get that recognition. But this person, through attorneys, was claiming to be a trans woman. claimed that he identified as a woman. And the ACLU had their collective panties all in a bunch because the state of Florida would not pay to have him chemically castrated to give him expensive cross-sex hormones and to nicely remove everything down there or implant anything up top. So, oh my God, this was a clear violation of his civil liberties because they did not allow him to transition into the beautiful flower of a woman he thought she was. Shut up, ACLU. I do agree this man should have been castrated. However, not cleanly, not surgically, not with the aid of painkillers and cross-sex hormones. He should have been castrated with a dull, very rusty knife. Not getting antibiotics afterwards, and hopefully, hopefully he didn't catch tetanus. As far as the whole death penalty argument goes... I've said this before on this show numerous times. The death penalty should not be used as a deterrent because it doesn't work. People are still going to kill people. However, the death penalty should be saved for special occasions. The death penalty should be saved for people like this. Because if you're depraved enough to kill a 14-year-old child and then rape the corpse, you are wholly deprived. Strike that. You are wholly depraved as an individual. You, congratulations, should be eligible for the death penalty. If you are a serial killer and the only reason you have stopped is because you have been caught, congratulations, you should be eligible for the death penalty. If you are a serial killer and like the Golden State killer, you just got too old to kill anymore. Congratulations, you get a ride on old Sparky. If you're the Green River Killer, uh, the man avoided the death penalty by pleading guilty to 30 murders. Yeah. The death penalty should be used for those very extreme cases. But, like I said, just general, ah, he killed somebody while robbing a store, string him up. I don't think that's a good idea. But, in this case, yes, the death penalty was more, more than suitable. And, they should find a way to fast-track the appeals process so that way you don't have 30 years, pardon me, you don't have 30 years sitting in prison just wasting taxpayer money while you're there. Wasting taxpayer money as you go through four, five, six appeals that stretch out over all this time. And and the, the... cost of death penalties, you know, capital crimes to go 
through the full appeals process makes it cost significantly more than just a life prison sentence. I understand that. And I understand they should be eligible to their due process. I'm not saying they should be deprived of said due process. I think there's a better way. There should be a better way to make it happen. Courts specifically assigned to reviewing death penalty cases. Seems like a great idea. That way they're not t- tied up waiting waiting on the docket behind a million other things with a million other things following behind it. But that's just my opinion But on death penalty. But when it comes to the fact that the ACLU, who regu- regularly uses the prohibitive cost associated with the death penalty as an excuse of why we shouldn't use it, they also want to spend all this extra money ensuring that some guy who probably is not treated well in prison because of his crimes against a child, that this clown should undergo expensive medical treatment and surgeries. So that way, when he finally is executed, he can be executed as the person that he always thought he was. Bless his heart. Now, the ACLU picks some of the dumbest things. They, they used to care about all civil liberties. There was a time where if you were a conservative and if your civil liberties were being, were being squashed by, you know, a liberal government, they would fight for you. But here in the last 20 years, the ACLU has become a huge joke. The only thing they will ever stand up for is the perceived attack on civil liberties for lefties. They will fight for everything that's a left-wing cause, such as, I don't know, a dude who is a convicted rapist, convicted murderer, a sadist sex killer, they will fight for his rights with the air quotes to really expensive surgery, really expensive medications, and possibly move to a female prison where he, she, it, they, them, whatever, can feel more safe. I'm amazed they weren't trying to get him moved to a female prison ahead of time where maybe he could join states like New Jersey and having that weird coincidence that men identifying as women go to women's prisons and suddenly women are ending up raped or pregnant. It's just really weird how that would happen in an all-women's prison when you're moving males into that prison. I, I don't know. It's, it's 2 plus 2 equals 5 at this point. It is insanity, and I'm, I'm glad the ACLU had the good common sense to put this view on Twitter where I saw it earlier today and just had to look at it and go, you're an idiot. And speaking of idiocy, guns, 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 and more guns. So for the past however long, almost three months, there's been a lot of conversation on pistol braces. Typically, a pistol brace is used on, you know, like an AR-style pistol. Shoots a 5.56 round. It's got a short barrel. 
It's got the bump. It's got the buffer tube on it, and you're trying to hold it out. Shoot it one handed, due to the short barrel. It doesn't handle recoil well. So ten years ago, a man invented something that would go over the buffer tube, that would allow that weapon to kind of grab onto the forearm of the shooter and they could have a better controlled shot with this AR pistol. The person he invented it for was a friend who was a disabled veteran who even with smaller calibers was having issues trying to hold on to the weapon because he lost dexterity due to an injury in the military. Well, the ATF, the wonderful, wonderful ATF came along. They decided that, you know what, even though we have allowed these things and there's almost 3 million of them in circulation, we're going to declare that they are now an NFA controlled item. And therefore, if you have one, you must register it with the ATF. Even though there's no evidence that these uh, pistol braces make the weapon more deadly, does it improve accuracy? Yes. And so I could see why they can make the argument, well, it's more deadly because it's more accurate. Whatever. And you can shoulder fire it now. I mean, you can shoulder fire it when it was just a buffer tube, but I digress. The whole idea is that basically the ATF just reneged on their 10-year-old standing on pistol braces. Basically declaring them butt stocks that convert a you know, rifle caliber pistol into a short barreled rifle. Right. Well, they were having hearings at, you know, in Congress about this week, which it, it passed the house to block the ATF's ban. And there was a, there was at least one Democrat in, in one of the committee meetings before it went to the, floor for a vote. She says that she agrees with the idea of a pistol brace ban. But moreover, she agrees that it is up to Congress to legislate this item is illegal, not the not the law enforcers who can just go, yeah, we're going to write a new rule out. It's illegal now. And legislate with the stroke of a pen over in the executive branch. So I appreciate her having a principled stand. Yes, I agree with, I agree with the principle of this, but it is an affront to the constitution. And so I have to support this bill in committee. Then you, then you have, you know, the dummies, they, they always come out. The, oh, we know more than you because we're in Congress. You don't have to be a gun expert to legislate and rule on guns. Sheila Jackson Lee. Um, God, I wish I had the audio of her. Sheila Jackson Lee, the woman who once wondered about having a flag on the surface of Mars. Because obviously man has set foot on the surface of Mars sometime between 1969 and now. Yeah, she came out. Now you you put it on here and it makes it more deadly, blah, 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 blah. And there was a representative who was not part of the, the committee of some of these videos I was watching today, getting everything ready. And he was just running roughshod over the ATF. No, the ATF has not provided any evidence that 
you know, criminals are more likely to use a pistol, a pistol braced gun to commit a crime. No, there is no evidence provided by the ATF that shows that they are inherently more deadly as a result. When asked about registries, he said, he said, I do believe registries can be used to round up guns and to confiscate guns. Don't believe me? This is not him. This is me. Look at what uh, Germany did with gun registries instated by the Weimar Republic. As the National Socialist German Workers' Party was starting to gain traction the Weimar government decided, you know what? You own a gun, you can own your gun, but you're going to submit to a registry. Things in the registration, address, political affiliation, religion. And guess what happened when Hitler took over in Germany? He, Because basically... What, what this was put in place for was that if there should be some sort of insurrection, then the Weimar government could go round up all the Nazis, round up all their guns, and disarm them. Well, surprise, surprise, the Nazi party basically gained control of the Reichstag Hitler became chancellor, and he goes, huh, I've got this registry here. All the communists are going to be disarmed. All the Jews are going to be disarmed. This guy's against, this person's against me in politics. He's disarmed. He's disarmed. He's disarmed. And he rounded up the guns from Jews, which, again, if there was an insurrection by the Nazis who were very openly anti-Semitic, part of the reason they want the Weimar Republic wanted to round up their guns was to protect the Jews as well as their own political, their own political power. So now this thing that was started for ostensibly good purposes is now being used to do exactly what they wanted to prevent. When the uh, one of the representatives who, again, not part of the committee, but was testifying for the committee, when asked, does he believe these registries will lead to weapons confiscation? He said, just completely straightforward, yes, absolutely. Then you had some dumb Democrat, but... Don't you want to know about a felon having these guns? Um. Okay, if they're a felon, they probably went out of their way to get this gun in a fashion that it would not be noticed by the ATF. It was bought out of the back of a car or out of somebody's apartment, and it's stolen. It is hotter than a $2 pistol. So what are the odds that if they did illegally obtain one of these AR pistols with a pistol brace, what are the odds that they're actually going to do the paperwork to legally register that pistol brace? Probably non-existent. And it's just all... Fear-mongering, 100%. You, you have people talking about how bad a 5.56 five, round is. I mean, if I were to bring in a 5.56 five, round and put it next to one of my 6.5 Creedmoor rounds, you will notice there's a slight difference, and not just in the diameter of the bullet. You know, the bullet being, what, one point. Yeah, basically one millimeter wider in diameter. But you'll notice for a bullet that is only one millimeter wider, it is a lot longer 
because it's designed to have a very low ballistics coefficient, so it flies relatively flat for a very long period. But you'll notice that that bullet sits in a larger brass casing than the 5.56 round that shoots out of my AR platform. There's a lot more power behind it. In many states, the 5.56 or Remington 223 is not an approved round for big game hunting, specifically deer, because they are considered underpowered for killing big game. If you want to use them for varmints, you know, use it for coyotes, yeah, go out and, you know, shoot some coyotes with it. Or if you are trapping and there's a bobcat in the trap and you'd rather not go grab the bobcat with your bare hands while it's still alive, then you have something that will do the job. So this, this whole idea that Oh, the five five six is you know, if you're Joe Biden talking about the nine millimeter bullet, it'll blow your blow your lungs right out of you. No. Yes, the five five six is designed so that way if it you know hits a hard enough spot of tissue or bone, it will tumble. And it will do more damage that way. That's because it was designed to be a full metal jacket round, not a round that balloons and mushrooms out, also known as a ballistic round. That way, that's what transfers a lot of the energy and does the damage that kills. Because, you know, it was designed for a gun that would hopefully be picked up for use in the military. And, you know, we had this thing called the Geneva Conventions that says you can't have bullets that get bigger as they go through a human body. That would be called a war crime. But even then, Eugene Stoner kind of saw into the future a little bit. And, you know, I bet the military would love to use this. So, yes, he made sure that he was, you know, designed a bullet that really it is capable of killing a deer. You just have to be know what you're doing. So he, he designed this to be as lethal as necessary without making it complete overkill. But, you know, they still want, they still want the assault weapons banned, uh, which... You know, when the guy who is in charge of the ATF cannot define what an assault weapon is, but at the same time, if he can't define it, but they have to enforce the ban, that really going to be hard to enforce a ban. That would be very fun in court. Your Honor, he testified before Congress. He doesn't even know what one is. Their legislation says if it looks scary, it's a... If it looks scary, it's an assault weapon. When that's not the case at all. But, anywho's, that was just some of the dumb going on within D.C. and around the country this week. So, Christian protesters in Los Angeles, good job. ACLU, you're idiots, and you should just go away. And to lefties trying to grab our guns, I've up my game. Now, up yours. All right, so that's going to do it for the week. Again, thank you so much for you watching live. Again, I apologize for the slight delay with having to restart my computer so that it would function. If you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, please be sure to, you know, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications on both those platforms. Again, thank you so very much for listening to this on podcast podcast i have apparently i have alcohol on the mind i don't know if you're listening to this on podcast again same four things i ask every week number one please subscribe follow 
whatever your uh, platform says. Once you've done that, please rate it five stars. I'll accept four. Three and below, we need to have a chat. My DMs are open on Twitter at fake Tyler Morgan. The producers are yelling at me. I will have to hurry. Uh, once you have rated it, please review it. Say something nice. If you want to offer construction,